Welcome back to the show, everyone. It's Dina Calmetta here and Susan Davis with Jesus 24-7. And today we have a very special show and we're going to talk about the book Rapture or Tribulation. Now, these are prophetic words from the Lord given to Susan. Isn't that right, Susan? Yeah, that's right, Dina. Well, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you can say about hearing from God? Well, I'm one of those people that I went to a lukewarm church for a good solid 25 or 30 years, and uh, I seriously didn't think God talked to people, okay? (laughs) (laughs) So when God showed up in my life in that way, I was really stunned because I truly didn't think that was something that would ever happen to anybody let alone myself, and I really just was in the belief that communication with God was like a one-way situation. You know, we would talk to God, and he would listen, you know, and I really didn't give it more thought than that, but I mean, there's actually quite a lot of scripture in the Bible that supports the fact that God is still talking to his people. So I did have some fantastic encounters with the Lord, and he began to speak to me. And it admittedly, it began with, you know, small phrases of that sort. And I would just like, be, wow, he's talking to me. And then at some point, like it was exactly, I can remember it was exactly around September or actually August of 2010 in September that I began to hear from him by journaling. I would hear words that the Lord would give me and they were for the people, messages for the people. And he would impress on me the scriptures that he wanted included in with his messages. So everything, you know, pretty well lined up with scripture and supported and promoted scripture. You have the office of prophet. So um, tell us a little bit about this role and what it entails and exactly what are your thoughts on it? Well, it is a humbling role, uh, not always popular because sometimes God uses you to give messages to people that aren't always fun to give, but that's all part of it. I know a lot of people aspire to be a prophetic and hear from God, but I'm not trying to put it down in any way because it is an awesome uh, responsibility and everything, but it is a responsibility. And you find real fast that if you don't do what God asks, he'll give the task to someone else. And so it's best to be obedient, I've, I've discovered. Amen. Obedience is greater than sacrifice, the Bible says. And that's exactly what happens. And a lot of people... Dina, what they don't understand is people who have the gift of prophecy are extremely persecuted. And sadly, the persecution, some of the strongest and worst persecution can come from the Christian church. That is um, so true. So true. You know, I was so new to all of this. Like I said, it was a, a new concept for me that I was really had been a bit naive and quite shocked over the years that some of my worst, how do I put it? uh, Enemies? Well, I don't want to say enemies. I just want to say opponents or critics, perhaps, were coming from top ministry roles in churches and that sort of thing. But I have since learned that there's such a thing as religious spirits. And so the spirits that Jesus dealt with, with the Pharisees are alive and well, you know, (laughs) the Pharisees are gone, but the spirits are still here, you know? So yeah, that's kind of a sad thing to have to learn. But even so, one thing that people don't understand is you have to do what God says, and, and people don't take into account that, hey, you have a relationship with the Lord that you are trying to maintain. And if you don't do what he says, then you put your own relationship with him in check. And you don't want to do that ever if you, are, if you love the Lord and are close to him. And so um, we have to do things that other people don't appreciate, don't like, don't want us to do. But even so, you know... We have to be obedient to the Lord because we have our own relationship with him that is in jeopardy if we are not obedient. And so that's kind of my little take on it. 
What do you say to people who say it's not possible to hear from God? Well, I would say that they have not thoroughly read their Bibles, and they're being tainted by religious spirits that are running in the church saying that these things are not true, that that was for, a lot of people say these kinds of things were for a different dispensation. And, but the scripture, totally in opposition to that. And let me give you an example. It says in Joel 2.28, it says, I will pour out my spirit. And it says, and afterwards, uh, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And even on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And then in Acts 2.17, it goes on to say, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So those very similar scriptures in the Bible. And then also, let's go to Second Peter first twenty one, actually 20. It says, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture comes from one's own interpretation, for no such prophecy was ever brought forth by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And so if you are actually really hearing from God, it wasn't your idea. It, it's never going to be your idea. Any, anything that's going on, prophetically is coming straight from the Holy Spirit. And so Amos 3, 7 says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And so essentially what this is saying is that God will not do a thing until he first reveals it to his people. And this scripture does not say that there will be a time in the future that this scripture is no longer in effect. It is basically, <laughs> this is the way it is. So there's no, no expiration date? None at all, actually. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and uh, Dina, here's another great scripture that really points to the gift of prophecy being alive today, despite what everybody else says about that. 1 Corinthians 14.1 which is in the New Testament, states that follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. So I think that says it all. Amen. With that said, you know, it tells us more specifically about this book, Rapture or Tribulation, and why it's an important book for these times is the book has messages from the Lord that line up with Scripture and point to being ready at all times for the Lord's return. So people who are prophetic are often believed to tell futures, and, you know, that's true as in John of Revelation, Daniel, and Ezekiel, for instance. But God uses prophets to point people to his word and his ways, and that's something that a lot of people do not grasp. And it's important to understand that because, Dina, uh, so many people just think prophets are just like you know, foretellers of the future. Fortune tellers. Well, yeah, in some ways, especially false prophets that they <laughs> follow. But in so many ways, people think the office of prophet is merely just for the purpose of, you know, saying, oh, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. When the reality is the role of prophet is for God to send messages through that individual to bring the people back to his word, back to his ways, and to turn back to him. And that's the predominant role of the prophet. And it's not a popular role with people, because usually it's about getting people away from the world, and most people have trouble with that. And so just like you can look at, you know, guys like Isaiah and Jeremiah, they were always having problems because people did not want to really pursue the Lord. And that was the message of Isaiah and Jeremiah, to come back to God and get right with God. Amen. Amen. So as the title suggests on the book, Rapture or Tribulation, you obviously support the idea that the rapture is pre-tribulation. So what do you have to say about that? Well, over and over, God points me to the truth that rapture is pre-tribulation. 
And the enemy hates that because pre-tribulation is the only position of the other positions of mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, and no rapture that prepares, actually prepares the people for being ready for anything. And so when people are focused on the idea that there is no rapture or that they're going to be in tribulation either midway or all the way to post-tribulation, which is a ridiculous notion, and I'll address that in a minute. The problem with those thoughts, which come straight from the enemy, is that those people have nothing to watch for. The Bible has so much scripture that talks about watch and be ready and always be ready. If you think you're going into tribulation or there's no rapture at all to watch for, there is nothing to watch for. And therefore, there is nothing to really be ready for. There's no sense of urgency. And here's the other thing. The reality is that the same thing that a person needs to be ready for the rapture, and people talk about that, the people who believe in rapture and believe that it's pre-tribulation, they talk all the time about having your garments ready, you know, stain free and everything. The Bible talks about that. Mm -hmm. And so many people are focused on, I've got to get ready for the rapture. I've got to get ready for the rapture. But the, the reality is the same thing that... We need to be ready in time for the rapture. And yes, I believe it's closing in with all the evil in the world. But the same thing is the same thing required for anyone who would face a sudden unexpected death situation. That's right. And we have talked about this before on this program. We've talked about people who have been hit by lightning, taken straight bullets. They've been in a, a terrible car accident. They've been caught in a plane crash, which we just saw recently happen, a terrible plane crash in China. And we've seen, you know, unbelievable, unexpected events that just people are taken out of this world to face the Lord without any warning. And that can be tornadoes, hurricanes, floods. I mean, I've read recently some of the most unbelievable car accidents that are going on. And who knew that that person would get up that morning and that would be the last morning? that they would have breakfast in this life, you know? And I try to make this point all the time. I mean, I knew of a pastor who was not focused on the urgency of being ready for rapture. And he said, well, he had young children and he believed that God would have him raise those children before he would return. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. That is just unbelievable. And so he was not directing his entire congregation into the urgency of being ready for anything. I mean, I personally believe that when a pastor preaches in front of his church, he should be of the mindset that there might be people in that group that he will never see in this life again, okay? Mm -hmm. And so if you have that thought in mind, then you would always be ready, maybe perhaps not just rapture, although yay, we should all be ready, but for anything. And the requirements to get into heaven in the next life are the exact same thing as a person who dies unexpected shooting or, or car wreck as they would if they rapture were today. And so when you have doctrines and theologies that lead people to think they've got all the time in the world or certain things have to happen like tribulation and that sort before they would prepare their robes or as the Lord said to prepare their lives then this is, God hates that, Dina. He really hates it mm -hmm. because it's drawing people away from being prepared. It's like Lot's wife. You know, there's a church of Lot's wife and then there's a church of the bridegroom of, who is Christ. And we just really have to focus on being ready. And what, and what is so bad about that? <laughs> you know, it's like you don't want to be lost for eternity because you didn't have urgency in your spirit to be ready amen and so that and not only that the scripture completely supports a pre-tribulation rapture and we've done videos on that before and i'm going to ask dina to post those videos below this video and you can watch those as well in addition to getting a copy of the book yeah so tell us a little bit about uh the specific content of this awesome book well, I think, yeah, if I just read through real quick, there's 24 chapters, and if I just read the headings or the 
the individual chapter headings. I think it will tell a whole lot about the contents. Yeah, that'd so, be great. Yeah, and these are headings that go along with actual letters that the Lord gave me. And so here we go. And definitely, I believe this book is is absolutely for the people today. So chapter one is Do Not Be So Sure of Yourself. Chapter two is A Partial Surrender Leads to Death. Three is The Hour of My Return is Closing In. Chapter four, Do Not Despair in These Dark Days. Five, I take no pleasure in punishing men. Six, it will be just as the days of Noah and Lot. Seven, this is your purpose for living, to choose for or against God. Eight, I want a pure bride. Chapter nine, come away from the path of destruction you are on. Number 10, so few are listening. Chapter 11, I cannot take you if you ignore my instructions. Chapter 12, don't be like Lot's wife. Chapter 13, children, seek me in all things. Chapter 14, nothing can stop what I have ordained. Chapter 15, take off your blinders, open your eyes. 16, they devise a God in their own mind. Chapter 17, very few are watching or waiting on me. Chapter 18, don't spend another moment outside of my precious will. Chapter 19, my kingdom will consist of those few who have found me to be worthy of their utmost devotion. Chapter 20, stop struggling, looking for that which can only be found in me. Chapter 21, I'm looking forward to meeting with you. 22, I will not allow this world to carry on much longer. 23, repent of your evil, your wicked plans of making goals and a future apart from your God. And finally, chapter 24, I can bring you from whatever sin you have been engaging in. Wow. Those are some powerful chapter heading. Hey, Susan, um, can you read one of the letters from that book? Oh, well, sure, sure. I've got a book excerpt that anybody can find on the sample chapter section of the website for the book. So I'll just read that one. And the heading is the hour of my return is closing in. And so here it is. All that I promise to happen in my book are coming together before your very eyes. Listen carefully as I am about to give you new words. Children, listen to me. This is your Lord. The hour of my return is closing in. If you are watching, you already know this. My children, you cannot deny that the world has become dark and evil. All are turning their backs to me in unison. Only my remnant bride remains untouched. She is small in number. Very few pursue me on the level I require. All others hunger after the world. The world holds them too tightly in its grip. Soon I will put aside the few who really seek me, and I will leave the rest to face my wrath and the vengeance of my enemy. Mankind will suffer in this the last hour. These days are about to come to fruition. I am giving you ample warning. I am supplying you with an abundance of signs and messages from those I have sent ahead to warn. My words and my warnings have been clear. So many choose not to regard them. Very few seem to be alarmed by what is coming to the earth. Already the effects are being seen from the lifting of my hand of protection over the earth. Children, come to your senses. Look around. See that my warnings and messages are coming to pass. And all that I promise to happen in my book are coming together before your very eyes. Pull off your blinders, look around, read my book, seek me through humility and prayer. I will show you truth and lead you down my safe path. All other paths are marked for death. Leave the world behind. Seek me for truth and safety. Humble yourself. Repent of your sins. Surrender your life completely to me. I will save you. I am willing. You cannot save yourself. No one can save you but me. It is my blood spilt on Calvary that has paid your ransom for a lifetime of sin against a holy God. Let me secure your future with me for eternity. Come with me when I retrieve my bride. I am ready. Are you? Are you coming out to safety? Ask yourself and get right with your God. The hour is slipping away. Your King, Redeemer, Rescuer, Adonai. 
and these scriptures go along with it. First John 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Philippians 2, 15, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Matthew 20, 16, so the last shall be first, and the first last, for many shall be called, but few chosen. Acts 20, 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. And so there you have it, Dina, is just sampling from the book. Thank you so much. That is so powerful. Yeah, it is. It it really is. It is a very, very good book as far as, you know, an overall understanding of the end times mm-hmm. that we're living in. And it's in uh, English, but what other formats can somebody find the book to be found? Okay, well, it's also done in Spanish. So for all our Spanish speaking friends around the world, we have that. We've got it in Chinese. And glory to God, we have it in Japanese, and we have it in Ugandan language, and we have it in some other Pakistan and Indian languages like Hindi and Punjabi, for instance. Wow. So, yeah, we have it in some different ones. So how are you finding readers are receiving the book? Well, we get some really great comments about our other books also and these books in general. And I'll just read a couple of the comments. This one says it's a must read for people who think they are saved. For anyone that thinks they are saved and ready, this is a must read. It's a very sobering message and revelation about the Lord's requirements to be ready. God's word says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. If this be the case, then the majority of the church are deceived about their salvation and are not ready as they think they are. If you are entangled in the world or the things of this world, read this as a matter of urgency and heed the warning. Repent and turn away from the desiring of things of this world and seek the Lord earnestly. Thank the Lord for messages like these, which have, which just once again shows his grace towards us. And um, my heart is full. This book made my heart full to hear how our Lord and Savior pleads for his church to get right and prepare for his coming. I had to read it twice. It was so compelling. I know personally that I intend to fully follow his instructions, hoping and praying that I am found worthy when he arrives. Great read. And then, of course, brilliant, been motivated to watch my life. And so those are just, you know, a couple comments. But yeah, we have a lot of people that have read the book over the years, and we just want to continue to promote it because I believe the messages for our, for this generation are timeless. Absolutely. And where can they find the book? Okay, well, Dina, I'm going to ask you to put our general website up there. And we have a actual website for, we have like a website that's general for some of our other books. So it's almost like a catalog of information. And then we have a website that's dedicated to this particular book. So we have a link for that. On that website, there are different links to the different PDF files if the person would like to have a physical softback, soft cover book, they're available through Amazon and you can get it like that. You have to pay for it, okay? And the proceeds, the royalties go back into the ministry fund to support the ministry. No, I do not make any profit from the Lord's words. So I want to be sure to mention that. But we do offer PDF links so you can just load that up on your phone, your laptop. It's also linked into Kindle for the small fee of 99 cents. You can load that up and read that. So there's just different. Apple is another format. So, you know, we've, like I said, we have a a YouTube in Spanish for people who want to hear it in Spanish. And all 24 chapters are read in Spanish. And so we have just various types of formats that the book is in. Praise for, God. For people, yeah. That's amazing. So in closing, what do you want people to take from this interview about the book? 
Well, I just want to say that this does not override the Bible. It's just a book with word from the Lord to get back into the Bible, because I personally believe that, unfortunately, although the West, the Western world and the world on a whole, even though we are so blessed in our electronic devices, I mean, most people have an electronic device in their hand at one point or another during the day. We have laptops, we have access to any book. Despite all that, I think that this generation is probably one of the most Bible illiterate generations probably of all time. And it's really sad that they have allowed the enemy to distract them from the word of God. And basically, like the Bible says, you know, he talks about these people die from lack of knowledge. And that's exactly what's happening to this generation. We know this generation is dying from lack of knowledge because it's not hard to figure that out. Look at all the evil everywhere you go. It's just everywhere you go, evil is rising up. And that doesn't happen unless the people have walked away from having a relationship with the Lord by reading his word, by staying close to him through prayer and surrendering to him fully. And these are some of the things that I would want people to take just from this book and to be ready for what's coming very soon. And we can see it just by following the word of the Lord and, you know, being cognizant about what's happening in the world. Yeah, to take just a quick look at the headlines, you know, um, (laughs) with the Bible right there next to you, it's it's all coming to pass, just like he said it is going to come to pass. And so right, right. it's pretty incredible. The Bible is uh, the most up-to-date reading that you're going to have. But I tell you one mm-hmm. thing, you start reading in the end times um, in the Bible, you start reading those scriptures, and then you'll see the headlines, and it'll all connect. Right, right. Susan? Oh, yeah. And if I could, I'd just like to take advantage of this opportunity to mention that in addition to this book, Rapture or Tribulation, there are other books that we have that are also free and easy to download. And that would include Marriage Supper of the Lamb, which is about the end times, and also Bride of Christ, Prepare Now, Left Behind, or Rapture, and Ready for Rapture, and uh, other things like that. So, Just wanted to plug the other books that we have. Oh, no, absolutely. And I will make sure to leave links below this video. So it'll be easy for you guys to find. Um, Mm -hmm. But Susan, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about this exceptional book. I just want to say thank you so much for giving me a chance to talk about this book and, you know, let people know about it so that they can find it and read it. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I highly encourage you guys to go and um, either download this book, which is super simple to do, or, you know, you can go to Amazon and uh, get it on Kindle. So, you know, Uh it'll be easy to read or whatever way you choose, you got to take advantage of this amazing book and read it. And, you know, I've had people tell me that when they read your book, Susan, Um, that they feel as if God is speaking to their heart directly. Right. And and it's free. The books, the books are free and you can't do better than that. In fact, I would just say, if you want to gift people with the books, you can do that as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an excellent idea, you know, birthdays or whatever, you know, and, um, Mm -hmm. or just for, you know, just because. So um, thank you so much again, Susan. For everybody else, please do leave your comments below this video and uh, stay tuned. We have more videos coming very soon. God bless everyone.